In the final scene of that classic 1950 movie, Sunset Boulevard, former silent film star Norma Desmond, played by Gloria Swanson, looks into the camera and says the now famous line, all right, Mr. DeMille, I am ready for my close up. While the line ultimately reveals her delusional state of mind, I have to admit that I've thought about those words more than once as we gather more and more here in virtual space, each of us staring into our own camera screen, most of us, whether we're ready for our close up or not. At least with Zoom, we can turn off our video if we are feeling especially unprepared. But unlike Norma, there is nothing delusional about what we are doing here as we adapt our liturgy and communion and ministry from one medium to another. As we gather as digital disciples to worship and give praise to God, to be church no matter what. In fact, our cast of characters has consistently grown online from friends joining us from far flung locations to a host of extras that include those of both canine and feline persuasion. Along with the cast of characters in this morning's gospel passage, Jesus, Simon, Andrew, James, John, Simon's mother-in-law, the, the residents of the entire city of Capernaum, not to mention their accompanying demons. We are also given multiple scenes and settings from the steps of the synagogue to Simon and Andrew's house, to the bedside of Simon's mother-in-law, to the suddenly crowded doorway of that house, from that well-worn threshold to a deserted place, and from that solitary place of prayer to all the neighboring towns throughout Galilee, so that Jesus could proclaim publicly the good news that he came out to do. More than a half dozen scenes in just 10 short action-packed verses from Mark's astonishing gospel. In fact, St. Mark is right up there with Spielberg and Tarantino when it comes to setting a scene. So too does our current online meeting, our, our online meeting platform, Zoom Church, as some of you have called it, remind us of the kind of camera work that makes any film come alive. The technique of changing the focal length of a camera lens zooming in for a powerful close-up or zooming out for a dizzying wide angle shot that takes in the entire breadth of a scene. We might do well to imagine our gospel lesson today in cinematic terms. So I hope you will join me in imagining St. Mark in the director's chair and quiet on the set as it were prefacing the opening scene this morning with the immortal words of the silver screen. Lights, camera, roll tape, and action. We start with a mic drop. Jesus has just taught with authority and driven out an unclean spirit. The camera hands across the silent synagogue, capturing the amazement and astonishment of those present cut to a low angle shot of Jesus's feet and those of Simon and Andrew and James and John as they walk out of the synagogue and into the dusty streets of the little fishing village of Capernaum. A wide angle lens reveals the long horizon of the Sea of Galilee in the distance. The camera follows the ragtag team to, a, to the doorway of a humble house with coarse walls and a roof made of earth and straw. We watch the group enter in from the bright light and heat of day to the welcome cool darkness within. 
Responding to the sighs and whimpers of someone suffering, they crossed an open courtyard into a small room. The camera zooms in, first on an elderly woman's face, Simon's mother-in-law, pale and sweaty with fever, and then to Jesus's face, warm and tender with compassion. There's a change in lighting. The music swells in the background and suddenly we see Simon's mother-in-law up out of bed, the color return to her face, heating up some lentil stew for the boys. There's a bit of time-lapse photography as we watch the sun set over the village. Then the camera zooms out and then zooms out some more to capture the number of townspeople come to the doorway with all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city gathers around the door. Word has spread about what happened in the synagogue, what happened in Simon and Andrew's house, who Jesus is. The camera slowly pans over the crowd, their desperate, hopeful faces cut to Jesus sometime later that night. While he is exhausted from the events of the day, he cannot sleep. In close-up, we watch as he gets up off his mat, and while it is still very dark, leaves Simon's house and walks away from the village to a deserted place where he is all alone. The camera switches to a wide angle again. Desert, wilderness, emptiness, starlight, heaven. Jesus prays. The camera zooms in on his face, his eyes upturned to heaven, his brow furrowed, his lips mouthing a prayer we cannot hear but somehow know. At the sound of approaching footsteps, the camera pivots around and we see Simon and his companions come searching for Jesus. And as our Lord rises from his private prayer, we hear him say, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. So we want to follow and certainly do not wish to see him leave. The camera remains stationary as we watch Jesus and the disciples walk off into the distance and into their ministry. End of scene. Roll credits. What do these scenes from the life of Christ and his earliest disciples have to teach us? To start with, they reveal that ministry cannot be contained in any one place, not the synagogue, not the house of one in need, not even one town. The same holds true today when we are learning that in the face of pandemic and the closure of our church buildings, our ministries will continue. We might even go so far as to say that our thoughts about worship and ministry are being set free as we turn from the close up angle of all we did within the walls of our church building and zoom out to the wide angle lens of all we might do beyond them. Further, these scenes from Mark's gospel show us how God's love never stands still and the love of Christ is never stationary, but always, always on the move. From the expected places to the unexpected, from the nearby to the further away, from one to many. If we let them, the scenes from this passage from Mark's gospel can both comfort and inspire, zoom in on the intimacy of prayer and open wide our ministering hearts like a panoramic lens. Following the direction of his father, Jesus himself sometimes zooms in for needed prayer and reflection so that he can then zoom out for teaching, healing, and ministry. Immediately after he is found praying in the deserted place, 
He does not remain there, but changes angles, changes focus. Let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the good news. Before cinematographers ever used the word zoom to describe a change of focus from a long shot to a close up or vice versa, there was a time when we used it only to describe sudden or fast movement. How wonderfully strange then, and even apropos, that this word Zoom has become such a part of our church conversations and vocabulary, where it provides us a way to gather as disciples in spiritual togetherness at a time when we must practice social distance, where it allows us the grace of seeing each other close up each week while offering the opportunity to refocus the lenses of our hearts and our ministries in different ways, especially in the long view. And so here we are, faithful disciples of Jesus in the deserted place of pandemic and in the land of Zoom. We follow Jesus. We zoom in for prayer and we zoom out for ministry, trusting that from all the all seeing lens of God's eye, who sits above the circle of the earth and calls the stars by name, we have everything we need to be ready for our close up as well as for the long view. Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Amen.